Searle, Minister of the Church of the Universe. Up until the passing of our dearly beloved brother, Prime Minister and Abbot of Clearwater Abbey, Reverend Brother Walter A. Tucker, I was an Archbishop and the Associate Prime Administrator of the Assembly of the Church of the Universe. And now that Reverend Tucker has left us for the spirit and realm, I am the Abbot of Clearwater Abbey and the Prime Administrator of the Assembly of the Church of the Universe. Looking for an Associate Prime Administrator, of course. Yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, we do need help. On behalf of the Assembly, I would like to thank you for taking the time out of your day to come and share our grief and our joy over the passing of Brother Walter. He was, as he was known and loved by so many. On behalf of the Assembly, I would also like to extend our thanks and appreciation to everyone at the Pearl Company for their efforts in arranging quickly for the use of this facility and to the DeFalcos of the Hamiltonian for providing some eulogies online and, and for their kindness and, and help to get us a place which the construction put us here. And this is just as well. It's actually nicer. We have no bulldozers out front. <laughs> I wrote, but Brother Walter would be tickled pink to see any gathering of the Assembly of the Church of the Universe, even if, and perhaps especially, if it had to occur on account of his own memorial service. <laughs> I'm sure, like, I'm sure we've all, everybody's lost somebody, we all have parents and somebody that's in the spirit realm, and, and whenever you think of them, you get choked up, and I surely do. Not just Brother Walter, but my parents, who he loved, which is kind of weird, eh? <laughs> Brother Walter and my parents. But yeah, they loved him because he was that kind of a guy. He used to fix my mother's when she was 80, 90 years old. They used to come twice a year to set up her air, her air conditioning system in the house because he was an electrician. And uh, well, it was pretty cool. Now, what happened to Reverend Tucker was he was an electrician. And back in his youth, he worked at uh, Terminal Towers on King Street, the Holiday Inn there. And that, place was sprayed with asbestos, and just about everybody who worked in there died of mesothemiola. Brother Walter, as you know, he coughed a lot, and I think the only reason he got made it to 79 was because he smoked a lot of God's tree of life. <laughs> yes, yeah, God bless the tree of life. <laughs> Whether people believe it's a tree of life or not, I don't care, I do. As you know, this is a church that doesn't tell you how to pray because people either pray or they don't. That doesn't matter. What matters is how you treat other people because we're judged according to our works, not according to how many hours we banged our head on a tree or something for God because I don't think God made us for that. He made us to, to, to procreate, actually. <laughs> Grow, and surely we have. Now, well, I've got uh, an eulogy here from... Reverend Tucker's doctor. And, and when, what happened with Brother Walter, he was sitting in the car he loved, the one I drove here today, and uh, I just take him in to pick it up. They had some work done on it, and he told his mechanic, we were, there were people from Yugoslavia, his mother was a Russian Mennonite. So it was sort of people that he loved, and there, there was people from the old country. And he said to Larry, he shook his hand, he says, I don't feel good, I'm gonna go sit in the car. <laughs> well, I get a call. I'm at the bank, and I'm waiting for Walter, I get a call, I can't wake your brother up. So by the time I got there, Brother Walter was like, just sitting in his car with his head back and his mouth open. Very peaceful, and I didn't feel a pulse. He had his big coat on, he was warm. Well, I looked at Larry, I said, I think you better call an ambulance. I, just, I had no powers to wake up people like Brother, in the state that Brother Walter was in, eh? <laughs> So, I was so happy to see him happy. And I said, Doctor, I'll read his eulogy in a minute. We were in the doctor's office three weeks before, and Brother Walter's saying to the doctor, well, will you kill me if, you need, if I need to be, just pull the plug? And the doctor said, no, I can't. And I'm thinking, damn it, another court case for me. <laughs> so, <laughs> the doctor, Dr. O'Shaughnessy, assured Brother Walter that he would feel no pain. Now, none of us were all in denial that Reverend Tucker was winding down for the last two months, and uh, even the doctor, so we had breakfast. In fact, he suggested we do this, not for Brother Walter, who didn't want me to do this, but for us, 
because that's what we need to do. This is not him. He's where he wanted to be, and he'll go to Clearwater Abbey where he wanted to be. And that's what's going to happen to Brother Walter. Yeah, yeah. So what, what I'll do, I'll read an eulogy here from, uh, from the doctor. It says, Reverend Walter D.J. O'Shaughnick, M.D., Reverend Brother Walter Tucker, a finer goodbye. I better put my glasses on this. I'm showing my age. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I lost that when I was 20. <laughs> Shiny, thank you. I <laughs> a final goodbye. I am presently on holidays with my family in the United States and unable to be here in person. Nonetheless, I would feel remiss if I didn't get a chance to say goodbye and to remember a great friend and patient who I have known for 20 years, over 20 years. Brother Walter was definitely his own man. He lived life his own way, but a life filled with love, kindness, and sharing. One would have to look far and wide to find a more kind and gentle soul. To know him is to love him, for he constantly exuded warmth, compassion, and love for humanity. He was an extraordinary physical human being. Even his 80th year, he was still quite fit, bright, and active. On one of his last visits, he dropped to the floor and did 10 consecutive push-ups barely breaking a sweat. <laughs> he did 30 a day, 30 in the morning and 30 at night. On any day, he would easily do 30 push-ups a day and kept fit riding his Harley motorcycle. Of course, it's a Honda. <laughs> I will never forget his radiant, joyful smile, and I will never forget the man. Brother Walter, I will see you in heaven. Respectfully you, Walter O'Shaughnick. Dr. O'Shaughnessy gave me a medical license. Brother Walter wouldn't take it. <laughs> he said, God gave him his license. He didn't need the government. Uh, I believe that Sister uh, Judy, uh, she has a, a, her daughter's eulogy that she'd like to read. This, uh, Sister Judy, Judy's a very, Walter's best friend. Good afternoon, my name is Judy, and I will try to get through this without crying. By the way, Dr. O'Shaughnick is now my doctor. He didn't want to take me as a patient. He told, Dr. Walter, he told Walter he'd have to marry me. But he got me in anyway, so. Anyway, he was a good friend of mine. So it is with great honor today that I am here to talk about my dear friend, Reverend Walter Tucker. I have been fortunate enough to have had the pleasure in the last five years with Brother Walter almost every day. He was my friend, mentor, companion, and always there for me to help me in any way he could. We spent time having coffee and just talking and talking. We always had something to talk about. We both shared so much about our lives together. He told me many stories about Clearwater, all his trials and tribulations, his growing up, his children, the justice system. I loved hearing his stories and he was an amazing storyteller. We both had a passion for reading. We would sit all day in the sun and just read. I will just say that he holds a very special place in my heart. I have so many memories of moments we shared. I would like to just talk a few minutes about how happy he was before his passing. He was happy to have read the whole 10 series of Mission Earth by Ron L. Hubbard because he couldn't wait to read it. He was thrilled and excited that his son Barry was coming for a visit. They had not seen each other for a while. They had a wonderful visit. After Barry's visit, he talked about all his children. He said he was proud that they all did okay. He was also excited to tell me that at his friend Ivan's funeral, he saw a son that apparently he had never met or known. He said he looked like the Tuckers, and he hit his heart. I saw the surprise this gave him, and it just kept saying that his life was good. I'll just close in saying he was so many things to me, but he really was a presence in my life that gave me so much pleasure. I will miss him dearly. 
He was telling me only weeks ago that he was so content with his life, that he had lived, said he had lived a good, good one, and that he wasn't afraid to die, that life had served him well. Well, my friend, we will meet again, but Brother Walter's contribution to my being of happiness, strength, understanding, definitely will sustain me. Thank you. I was Brother Walter's neighbor for 12 years. My granddaughter came to live with me when she was seven. So he's been a big part of her life. So she asked me if she could write something. So I'm going to read what my granddaughter wrote. She put in memory of Brother Walter. He was a wise man. Where his intelligence came from, his experiences. His experience he once shared with me, and he made me see things in many different ways. He had a brave, sweet, and caring heart who had positive thoughts about everyone and everything. I will never forget the things he taught me along the me and the memories that I will hold in my heart forever. I have known him since I was a little girl, and he was my friend as much as he was my nanny's. I love to see the smile on his face every time my grandma spoke about me and how well I was doing in school and sports. He pushed me to keep trying and never frowned upon me. He was just happy because he knew I gave my best. I will miss you, Brother Walter. You may be gone, but not forgotten. Samantha Miller. Thank you. Thank you, sister. Thank you. I would uh, suggest, we really at the church, like I said earlier, we don't really have any specific way of praying, but uh, if you want to have a minute of silence, that would probably do it. That's good. I can hear brothers saying that's cool. <laughs> we, uh, over the years, you know, we've been in and out of court with this marijuana stuff. and We've done an awful lot of different court things, and we're still doing, and we still have. We have a brother here from North Bay, Reverend Etier, who's still before the courts and in and out of jails. And I'll tell you, we have something we're doing, and we'll be done this year. Because uh, Reverend Tucker's right. They have no, no right in their bedrooms and no right in our closets where we're supposed to pray and worship or whatever it is we, where we have our special space to communicate with ourselves and God knows what after that. And we always believed, the Reverend Tucker all believed that when Jesus said God was the Father, he made the Jews a little angry because they had Yahweh. <laughs> and he really put it on us because we have wives and women. And so God's the mother too. It was a very important thing in this church to realize that women are our equal, probably more, a, little bit, a little more equal than we are. In any event, and a lot of times we just sit around the house and we sang songs. So if Brother Stephen would be good enough to help me here. Brother Walter, he really liked, in fact, about a week before he passed on, he, he had me get in the grandfather's clock again. So does anybody know my grandfather's clock? You don't know my grandfather's clock, though? No. Because Johnny Cash does it, so, <laughs> so you got to like it. But we're not going to do Johnny Cash's version. You can find a picture. I don't see my grandfather's clock. Right through the door. Right over the shell, so it's still night. Years on the floor. It was taller by half than the Never. 
dispose of each sheep to be wrong. And it kept in its place, not a frown upon its face, and its hand never hung by its side. But it stopped short, never to go again when the old man died. Nine years without slumber, tick tock, tick tock is like a second's number. Tick tock, tick tock is stopped short, never to go again when the old man died. It rang an alarm in the dead of the night, an alarm but for years had been dumb. We knew that his spirit was loving for fly, that is our of the archer and cut. Still the clock kept the time with a soft and bubble charm. As we silently stood by his side, but it stopped short, never to go again when the old man dies. Ninety years without slumbering, tick tock, tick tock is life. Five seconds numbering, tick tock, tick tock is stopped short. Smoke more before I start to play my guitar. I just, uh, <laughs> There's another song Walter liked to do. I don't know if we can play that. The more you know, the more we get together. Brother Walter said we should gather more. Problem is, when we do, we usually get raided. <laughs> and uh, I wish I was kidding, you know. <laughs> but in a case like this, I've been assured by the police that they were staying away. So. No, well, not in the building because. People that the cigarettes and you know other yeah. people don't smoke and uh, yeah but if if we all did smoke I'd say sure of course I don't own the building <laughs> so no no outside would be good and we've got our lovely lady here she's really cool but uh, if you'd like to want another song I have two other songs okay, the more we get together you know how it goes Steve the more the more <laughs> the more we get together together where's Julia. Julie, come on over here. Come on, where are you? The more we get together, gather together, the more we get together, the happier we'll be. The more we get together. Oh. Okay, then what we'll do, what we'll do instead of that, we'll just play something that we know. Let's do that one again uh, when we do out there. Do you know? Do you want to you say something, Brian? Yeah. Did you want to say something, Brian? Brother Walter? Sister Julie here. When I was in jail, <laughs> we were in the dorm. We spent through two or three weeks. You really, it's kind of neat, eh, you know, to become another kind of a brother behind bars again. Yeah. 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 He did his time, I did my time, but uh, what was I thinking about? I did have enough <laughs> smoke earlier to forget about what I'm talking about. <laughs> Obviously not enough to play my guitar, but... Uh, <laughs> Uh, yeah, we went through we went through penitanguishing. That was just a dirty hole. Right? Yeah. And Sister Julie, that's what I'm talking about. Our, our sister here, she actually went to the police station. She is licensed by the government or approved of, and she came and visited me in Barton Street Jail, right up next to my cells, just like any other minister. Don't let anybody tell you that the Church of the Universe is not valid. My God, that's what they tried to tell Jesus about his church, and he said his church was the people. God's church is the people. Not a building, nothing. The people. And that's what we represent. You don't need, you can believe whatever the heck you want to believe. There's only one rule, or as Reverend Tucker said too, that's do unto others as you would have others to do unto you. Or don't hurt yourself and don't hurt anyone else. And you've all heard Reverend Tucker say that. That's all there ever was. And the rest is bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> I don't care, do you have anything? Anyway, there she was. 
Yeah. I've been out. I was in, I, a couple of weeks into my sentence there. Yeah. They took the day to pen thing, but uh, it was amazing. Go on and say something, Sister Jules. Well, I know Brother Walter would have loved this because he loves singing. So I'm glad mm -hmm. we're doing this. Yeah. He yeah. did. He was always singing. He was like a bird. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, this is this is wonderful. I'm so glad. So many faces I haven't seen in a long time. Walter would be just beside himself to see all you guys. I don't know a lot of the people from the old Clearwater days. He spoke about a lot of his experiences there, and you were loved. Everyone was loved by Walter. He had a way of making even the worst situation and finding the positive in it. And I loved him for that, because he, he could never despair around Walter. You know, you'd always point out something good that come out of even the worst situation, and I love that about him. Um, he just he always told me, get over yourself, you know, get over it, and you'll be okay. I really miss him, and I, I know you guys are all here because it's the same for you. And as Michael said, it's a good thing. I'm actually also joyful that he passed on because he always said, you will not be changing my diaper, sister. Mm -hmm. He did not want to be a sick old man, and he was starting to become that, and he died at the right time for him. Um, and peacefully like he wanted to. He didn't want pain, and I'm, I'm glad of that. I, I, I miss him, and that's pretty selfish, but, you know, therefore, there you go, I'm selfish. He's not to yeah. <laughs> I think I can get through one other song. We sing it all the time with Reverend oh, Tucker. Busy doing nothing? Yeah. Busy doing all, he sang that. He sang that. <laughs> I, I just uh, didn't have enough time to put this together with the move and all. Yeah, that's good. But uh, I'm busy doing nothing most of the time. Anyway. No, you're not. That's not <laughs> true. <laughs> okay, uh, the, the other, what's the name of that song uh, we just played out there the other night? Uh, you are my, my sunshine. sunshine. You know that? Mm -hmm. okay. The other night, dear, was I Sunday morning coming down. You want I'll, the give, it I'll give it a shot. I'll we'll give it a shot. shot. It was a late request. And, yeah, late. and that'll be, that, we'll leave it with that. But this is a song that he just loved. Very late request. Please do excuse me. <laughs> Well, I woke up Sunday morning with no way to hold my head that did hurt. And the beer I had for breakfast wasn't bad, so I had another for dessert. And I fumbled through my closet and found my cleanest dirty shirt. And I washed my face Throw my hair and stumble down the stairs to meet the day. I'd 
smoked my brain the night before on cigarettes and songs I was picking. But I lit my first and watched a small kid chasing a can that he was kicking. And I crossed the empty street and caught the Sunday smell of someone frying chicken. And it took me back to something. Somehow, somewhere I lost on the way On a Sunday morning sidewalks And wishing, Lord, that I was stoned Is there something in a Sunday That makes a body feel all alone? And there's nothing short of dying Half as lonesome as the sound of the sleepy city sidewalk Sunday morning coming down In a park I saw a daddy with a laughing little girl that he was swimming And I stepped beside a Sunday school and listened to the song and I headed back for home And somewhere far away A lonely bell was ringing And it echoed through the canyon Like the disappearing dreams of yesterday On a Sunday morning sidewalk Wishing, Lord, that I was stoned there's something in a Sunday that makes a body feel all alone And there's nothing short of dying Half as lonesome as the sound of the sleepy city sidewalk Sunday morning come down Thank you very much and for, for coming and for everybody that you know made this possible to be here today. And if you'd like to come and have a look, I've got Brother Walter's ashes here. I had them out earlier. <laughs> I don't think he'd mind being pope, eh? <laughs> <laughs> so, well, again, thank you and God bless everyone. Yeah, Judy, Judy want to say something? I just wanted to say that I think that Brother Michael's done a marvelous job. He's gotten this all together. Thank you. He's a brother's, brother's friend and he's very proud of him. Thank you. Okay. God bless, guys. Have a talk and eat something.